Hey, how you doing today? I am Tequila Coleman. In today's video, I'm going to answer one of our God ordained spouse question. Um, you know, she's starting to doubt if this is her God ordained spouse. So let's jump into her email. She said, Hi, Tequila. Thank you for always helping us on this journey. I finally went all the way with God and stopped having sex or touching my God ordained spouse, even though at first he convinced me it was okay because we are married spiritually and we actually made a covenant together to be each other's spouse. I thought we were in the resurrection phase. God has even given me a nine month time prophecy and dream about when we will be fully reconciled and we should be in the second trimester where we should be feeling good about our relationship. He came and visited me this weekend, <clears throat> and he was so loving and attentive. Then he asked me to touch him, but I lovingly declined. He said that his person will always comply with him and that we want two different things. He drove off in his truck and left. I felt so hurt, rejected, and abandoned. Just minutes before he was going on and on about how much he loves me, then something just switched. He texted me that it is okay if things don't work out. And that he will always love me. I text him that I love him and respect him. And I will never put a man or anything before God or sin against my conscience again. He texts back. Yes, we understand each other. What do you think? Everything pointed to the fact that we were in the resurrection phase. But now it seems we are back to death or separation. I am second guessing if this is really my God or dang spouse. He does have a mother wound, father wound, and a running man spirit on him. I would be his third wife. We met at Bible study years ago, and I was scared to marry him at the time. But God brought him back around. Please help. Love you, girl. Okay. So thank you for sending in your question. Um, so here's the thing. Okay. I'm going to have to do another video on um, the stages because... Um, I need everyone to really understand, you know, each stage, because uh, if God gave you a nine month time prophecy and a dream, right, when, you know, God would be fully reconciled. But yet in your mind, you think that the two of you are at the resurrection stage. No, <clears throat> it doesn't even line up because after the resurrection, you know, is it's reconciliation. Right. So, no, you are dealing with a, a prodigal. OK, which means. It sounds like, um, you know, God has, has placed y'all in a divine separation. Um, and it, it also sounds like you should go ahead and let this um, let this uh, this relationship go ahead and die so that God can step in and raise it back to life. OK, <clears throat> excuse me. But I'm going to do a whole nother video, just breaking down each steps because I want everyone to get understanding. Everyone isn't at the resurrection stage. OK, a lot of you are in divine separation, are dealing with full blown prodigals okay so you might be at the death stage you know um so that is that i'll do another video for that i want to go back to where you started you said um you said i finally went all the way with god and stopped having sex or touching my god ordained spouse even though at first he convinced me it was okay because we are married spiritually and we actually made a covenant together to be each other's spouse so here's the thing Yes, God marries the God ordained spouses spiritually first, right? Because uh, whatever whatever we see happening in the physical, it was first established in the spirit realm. So God, you know, He understands His kingdom. He understands, you know, like how things how things come about. So yes, He will marry us spiritually first, but that doesn't mean that God is saying yes, go ahead and fornicate. No, God has boundaries. And this is one of the reasons why he places us in divine separation so that we don't fornicate. This is why he tells us, be loyal to your God ordained spouse so that we don't fornicate, so that we don't um, defile the marriage bed. OK, fornicating, that's one way how we defile, you know, the marriage bed. So that is a lie what your uh, God ordained spouse, you know, try to convince you of. He has that spirit of um, he got that lying spirit in him. OK. Um, so I want to be crystal clear. Just because God married the two of you in the spirit realm, that doesn't that doesn't mean God said, yes, go ahead and fornicate. No, because everything about this love story is out of order. The two of you are not walking on one accord. And he said this out of his mouth. He said, 
we want two different things. Amos chapter 3, verse 3 say, can two walk together except they be agreed? This is how I know God has, has stepped in and, and, and he's putting y'all in divine separation because the two of you are not walking on one accord. The two of you, just like he said, we want two different things. He's a full-blown prodigal. He's running. He's in fornication. He's in sin, right? No telling what else, you know? So um, until the two of you are walking on one accord, that's when God will begin to open up communication with the two of you, okay? So I need you to understand this is divine separation that God, you know, it has placed in between the two of you. Now, I know you said you felt so hurt, rejected, and abandoned by him, you know, the way how he responded to you telling him no, right? He just got up, he got in his truck, um, and he just took off, right? Here's the thing. Sometimes rejection isn't always rejection. This was God protection. This was God stepping in, okay, saving you because he saw how you, you know, you went all the way with God. You made up your mind. You say, I'm, I'm going to stop having sex. So God stepped in and caused your, your prodigal spouse to go ahead and leave to go ahead and drive away. So that's not rejection. That is actually God protecting you, protecting your heart from further hurt and pain. He's also protecting you from this man who say that he love you because he don't know what love is. His love ran out when you told him no. Could this be the reason why he's on marriage number three? And let's talk about that because you said you would be his third wife. Listen, you got to understand what that means. He's the common denominator in both of these marriages, right? And now that you're, you know, you you met with him, you see the running man spirit in him, you see fornication in him, you see um, mother and father wound, right? It's probably some other things you see in him, right? You see how he responds when he don't get his way? So maybe this is what god is trying to show you like wait a minute before you you know rush into this marriage or enter into this marriage he wants you to just go ahead and take a step back because god has to bring correction to him god has to move your prodigal spouse into a level of healing god has to show him himself he when a when a when a man marriage comes to an end he feels like a failure he does it brings about insecurities, okay? And I don't know if, I, I doubt it, but I don't believe he healed from these things, okay? So, you know, God has to teach him what it means to be a man. He has to teach him how to lead in love, how to lead your family, your wife. He got to teach him these things. He has a lot of growing and development to do. And God, and this is what God is going to, you know, he's going to, he's not going to do all of it. He's going to take him through some of it in his divine separation uh, process. Um, and you also have some growing, you know, that God wants to do in you as well. You know, so um, I don't believe that you heard God wrong, you know, um, and I want us all to get out of the habit of second guessing God when our prodigals are behaving, you know, a certain way. God, listen, I because I believe what's missing here is understanding, okay? You know, we we got to come away from when we see bad things happening, we assume that it is God. It, it's all the devil. God is all good. A prodigal is filled with evil spirits. That is of the devil. That's not God. God is the one who's telling you pray for him. That's God. Because your prayers is the very thing God is going to use to step in and pull him out of the hands of the enemy. Your prayers is what's going to help deliver him, you know, and shake him free of these evil spirits. So uh, just because he's showing up this way, that doesn't mean, you know, you didn't hear God right the first time. You probably did hear him right the first time. You're just dealing with a prodigal. So I need you to get a better understanding of what being a prodigal means and how, how prodigals show up so that you understand what you're dealing with. And then also, like I said, don't perceive his response to you as rejection because that was God protecting you. This man doesn't know what love means. He don't know what love is, you know? 
he um you know and he may not even realize it his love which is really lust it runs out when people tell him no when he don't get his way right so god has to teach him the true meaning of love okay god has to teach him the true meaning of love um i'm just looking over my note so in the meantime you want to just go ahead and continue to pray for his salvation continue to rebuke that running man spirit off of him um ask god to heal his mother and father wound ask god to heal the wounds that came from the first marriage and the second marriage you know ask god to show this man himself grow him up also rebuke that spirit of lust out of him sexual perversion rebuke all of these these spirits up out of him he also has a spirit of pride you want to rebuke that as well okay um but in the meantime you are in divine separation this is this is where y'all is at god he got y'all in a divine separation so this means when he contact you when he texts you don't respond when he calls you don't pick up the phone he come knocking at your door you continue to let him knock and act like you don't even hear him knocking at the door because when you open the door to him when you respond back to the text when you answer his call when you open the door you are now opening the door to the enemy to come in and attack you and make you feel all bad, make you feel rejected and abandoned. And this is why God places us in divine separation. It is for our protection, to protect our heart because the enemy loves to target the believing spouse heart. And he does this by operating through our prodigal spouses because he know how we feel about them. He know we desire the mayor. So he say, okay, I'm about to use my this son right here, the prodigal's um, son. I'm going to use him to go ahead and sweet talk her, tell her everything she want to hear. And when you say no, now here come all this stuff. You know, he's saying your way. Here come the rejection. Here come, you know, the abandonment, right? So you, we got to keep that door closed to the enemy. OK, and you got to show him tough love. This is this would be his third marriage. So something about you has to be different from first wife and second wife. Hold him accountable to becoming his best self. Hold him accountable to learning how to control his sexual desires. OK, if he can't control himself now, he will not control himself when he get married. So you don't want to be dealing with adultery in the marriage. OK, so he needs to be held accountable okay to becoming his best best self i say this all the time accountability is how a um, man grow up and mature okay and become responsible without accountability when we don't when we choose not to hold these men accountable they stay the same they continue to run they still don't know what love is you know they they, they confuse love with sex or lust right you know so when you hold him accountable now you are separating yourself from the rest of of the counterfeits right now you know he understands when it comes down to you i can't i can't operate this way with her i can't move this way with her i can't talk to her like this i can't deal with her this way because she's not going to have it she's going to hold me accountable i have to grow up when i come around her he needs to know that okay challenge him every man loves a great challenge okay when it when it when the challenge is for him to become better so hold him accountable to becoming his best self you see greatness in him so go ahead and pull it out of him by holding him accountable all right so that is it i am tequila coleman i will talk to you all real soon take care